All right, so tonight, I can get my iPad opened. We are going to be talking about prayer and fasting. Actually, fasting, because we've spoken about prayer a little bit, right? But tonight, we're kind of going to focus on, um, on fasting. Let me just get to where... Are you guys excited to talk about this? Oh, no, what? Why, why, why do we have to? All right. Okay. Has anybody here ever fasted? Has anybody here ever fasted and failed? <laughs> I wish I had more arms. By failed, I mean, God, I'm going to fast for three days. First day in, three hours in, it's like, oh, and then, you know. So, but you know what? God's not like, oh, he's like, thank you for trying. He really is. He's so gracious. He's so, so gracious. All right. Um, let's be reminded that fasting, right, the, um, the secret sauce or fasting is, is not uh, the church's idea. It's not my idea. It's God's idea, right? It's totally and completely God's idea. So, all uh, right. So, let's jump right in. Why fast? Why is prayer and fasting the secret sauce to kingdom living? And by the way, let me just give some preemptive stuff. So when I talk about fasting, I'm not speaking about intermittent fasting, you know, like, you, you, I want to lose 20 pounds, I'm intermittent. That's, that's not what I'm talking about tonight at all. I'm speaking about spiritual fasting, right, um, for a period of time to seek God, not just, um, and you know what, it's totally cool, I think, if you want to stay away from social media uh, uh, like as you fast, I think that's amazing. In fact, I think that's a self-discipline that we should all um, do, be doing more of, like more, more of. Because in the middle of writing a preach sometimes, somebody sends something. I'm just being honest. I go over, next thing I'm in Instagram for something, and I'm like, oh, 15 minutes later, and I don't have the, you know what I'm saying? Like it happens, right? So, fa you know, staying away from all of that social media stuff is awesome as well. But my point is, by saying that, is spiritual fasting, biblically, involves food, okay? It inv even if it's just breakfast, even if it's when I get up till, mid till noon, even if it's three hours a day for the day, it involves fasting, right? And even though, like, the thing says prayer and fasting, isn't that a cool poster? Have a look, have a look. Isn't it? I love my Marley. Uh, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, anyways, even though it says prayer and fasting, I'm really going to be focused on fasting, okay? Not prayer. And, and for it to be biblical, for fasting to be biblical, which is what we're talking about, it involves taking time to seek, draw near to the Lord, and, and eating his word, okay? All right, so let's start. Um, anyone here love to eat? <laughs> I'm raising my legs, too. <laughs> I think if Jasper could, Jasper would be raising something, <laughs> too, right? Because eating is amazing, right? It's so amazing. It blesses us. It gratifies us. It makes us feel really, really good, right? So let's put that out there. None of this is about, oh, my gosh, why are you eating? No, I love to eat. You guys have all, you've seen it. I, my, I love to eat. Um, but, but let's, I'm, I'm going to just share this, though. We live in a culture that we're so food-focused. Like, we're very food-focused here. We're excess, we're, we're food, well, not everybody, but I'm just, maybe I should just speaking for myself. <laughs> but we're addicted to it, right? You, you go to, give me a place, Canadian Tire, to get some tires for your car, and you're at the cash, and the chips are just called in your name, and they're like, carry it, you know? The salt and vinegar is like reminding you about what it tastes like. It's the truth. It's everywhere in our society, and, 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 and we're pulled in by it. We are. We're pulled in. And every holiday, Christmas, give me another holiday, New Year's Eve, Valentine's, you know, everything's shaped in hearts at Valentine's in red. St. Patrick's Day, everything's green. Like Easter. Easter, like, you know, the feasting. Like I'm just saying, we... we we're very, we're very focused on feasting. No one's going around saying, fast! You know, like, it's, it's not happening. It's just, it's just not. In fact, we're so focused on, like, again, <laughs> that sometimes Christmas is coming, and I'm not even thinking about, oh, it's the birth of Jesus. I'm thinking sugar cookies. 
<laughs> right? It's true. It's true. We're very focused on eating, and, 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 you know, as am I. We all are. And even though it's hard, even though we, we, we know that, and we know that food is great, we all also know that it is a good thing to be disciplined in terms of our eating. We know that it's a good idea to monitor and to um, just to kind of um, say no to some things that are going in. Right? Because that's, that's just disciplined, right? That's just disciplined. It's, it's a good idea. Well, fasting and prayer is also a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline, right? It's a spiritual thing that when we do often, it really will open us up to, um, to the presence of God. Anybody want to share with me some other spiritual disciplines besides fasting? It's a fussy thing over here. Other spir- Prayer? Uh, worship, what we were just doing earlier, because we're not just, we're not just here, it's not just a music concert, we're not just singing songs, we're actually lifting up an individual, like a person, a dude, Jesus, right? Like we're, and I love to call him that, because he's my guy. <laughs> I personalize it, I, I know he doesn't mind, so I do it. But um, fasting is, is, is one of the spiritual disciplines, what did I say, worship, prayer, give me another one, giving that we were just doing, that's also a discipline, because we don't give because God's like, man, I need some money, we don't do that, he's not in need, he owns it all, but when we give to him, it blesses us, right, so we are, we are, but the thing is, we live in a, in, in a society, as I was saying before, we're so controlled by food, and, and kind of addicted to certain parts of food, sugar and salt, like, anybody here a salt person? Anybody here a sugar person? Anybody both? <laughs> right? That's a bit problematic, right? So, but because we're so, like, drawn in by food, unfortunately, fasting is one of the spiritual disciplines that's most ignored. It is. It's most ignored. Like, churches aren't really talking about, some are, but some churches aren't talking about fasting at all, yet it is something that Jesus has prescribed for us to do. All right? So anyways, let's look at three reasons why uh, prayer and fasting is the secret sauce to kingdom living. Okay? All right. So, uh, and by the way, like I said, tomorrow we will start our first fast well, that I'm, uh, that since I've been here at Rain, It's going to be two weeks. We're going to start it tomorrow. And you do it any way you like if you want to join us. Maybe hopefully by the end of this you will. Um, so, you know what? Let me talk about that more at the end. But the first reason um, why... I believe prayer and fasting is um, the secret sauce to kingdom living is is that we're following Jesus' example. Jesus did it, right? Jesus did it. Jesus did it. So we're imitating Christ. There's a scripture, I don't know where it is, but the Apostle Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? So when we're fasting, we're doing it because Jesus did it. And men, I wish I could walk. Like I wish... I like that. <laughs> I want to walk. I want to move. I have to stand here because of you, the camera. But we're so happy that you're joining us on the camera. <laughs> but yeah, I want to move around. Anyways, like I said before, fasting is not the church's idea. It's not our, it's, it's God's idea, right? Many people in the, in the scriptures did it. Moses fasted while preparing to get the Ten Commandments. He did it twice. First, I, I know one of them at least. He fasted without food and water for 40 days. That's supernatural because we can't, we're not able to do that. Elijah also fasted for 40 days. Esther, Elijah fasted because he was in danger from Jezebel. Esther fasted um, for three days and uh, saved the Jewish people, right? Daniel fasted. I love Daniel. Oh, my goodness. Daniel fasted when he needed revelation to an answer to prayer. So if you're, if, if you've had a dream or something and you're just, fast, 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 fast. Jesus fasted to prepare himself for ministry, right? So in Matthew 5, uh, 5 to 7 rather, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke about some spiritual principles um, that he thought would be good in the kingdom of God. We spoke about some of them, and we're going to actually speak about all of, most of those for the month of January and February. We're going to talk about, you know, lust and stuff like that for January, uh, for February, you know, love, lust, that kind of stuff. But anyways, Jesus spoke about fasting um, on the Sermon on the Mount. Let's see what he said about fasting. Can you put it up for me, please? Matthew 6. So Jesus said, I wish we had it. Is it possible to get that screen on as well? No? Okay. Oh, dear. All right. So Jesus said, and when you fast. So when, fasting is not a command in the Bible. 
It's not like God said, go and tell. He's not, like when he said to get, get out of the church and go and tell people about me. Fasting is not like that. It's not a command, but it's a suggestion, right? And it's used for those who want to draw near to him, right? He says, when you fast, don't make it obvious. Don't be like, oh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he, he, do your brows, like fix your, okay, let me just read the verse, sorry. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do. A hypo, the hypocrites are like, oh, I'm fasting. Their hearts are not pure, but they want the world to know that they are suffering on behalf of the Lord. Don't do that. For they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for fasting. I tell you the truth, and listen to this, that is the only reward they will receive. So those people that are fasting and like, oh my gosh, don't tell everybody that you're fasting. This is a little different. This is a little bit different because we're doing what's called a co corporate fast, right? Where everybody knows that we're fasting. But if you're doing an individual fast by yourself, keep it to yourself. Don't be like, yeah, I'm fasting, and God told me to, and it's so hard. Don't do that, because the response that you get when people are like, oh, my gosh, really? That is the only reward you're going to get. God's like, mm, that was nice. You're not doing it for any purpose. Okay, let me keep reading. But verse 17, but when you fast, comb your hair, do your brows, put on your clothes, nice yourself up, you know, wash your face then no one will notice that you're fasting. No one's going to be like, oh, my gosh, what's happening to Susan? You know, <laughs> you don't want that. Then, then no one will notice except your father. Is it up there? Okay. Except your father who knows what you're doing in private, who knows what you're doing in secret, and your father who sees everything will actually reward you. What? There's reward for, for fasting? That's what it says. That's what it says. He will actually reward you. Um, the reward, possibly a deeper revelation of Jesus, a deeper revelation of Holy Spirit, more of him, you know, <clears throat> right? Okay, so that was what? That was Matthew 6. You don't, you don't have this verse, but if you go back in the chapters and go back to Matthew 3, right, um, where Jesus is just starting his ministry. So Jesus is just starting his ministry, ministry, and he was just baptized by John the Baptist, right? And so John the Baptist baptizes him, and he's coming out of the water. And as he's coming out of the water, he looks, and he, not everybody, but he sees the heavens open. And the Father says to him, some words of powerful affirmation. He says, he bigs up his son. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's my boy. That's my Jesus. He goes, that is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He says that about his son, which is amazing. If God says that about you, right? So you know what Jesus could have done? Jesus could have been like, yeah, yeah, that's me. He could have bigged himself up and said, Simia, Simia is a Jamaican term. Sorry, Jamaican. He could have, <laughs> anybody know what that means? Here? <laughs> yeah. Simia is like, look at me. It's just Jamaican. Simia, like, look at me. Look what, have you heard what God said? Jesus could have come out of the water, said, uh, said you know, big up himself and jumped on, on, on platforms and literally started having conferences. He could have done that, but he didn't do that. He was led into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness um, to, to spend time with his father, you know. Guys, let me just back up for a second. It's important to say this, that Jesus, when he was here operating on earth, he wasn't God. So I know that the whole incarnate thing with God and man together, for me anyways, it's, it's a bit confusing. But it's important to know that when Jesus was here operating on the earth, he was operating as a man. So he took his godness, forgive the word, his deity rather, and he put it aside. So all the information that he had, all the power that he had, he had to put that aside because he was functioning as a man empowered by the Holy Spirit. Anybody here have the, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of God living, Jesus living inside of them? So you've given your heart to the Lord, right? And if you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, then there's no difference between you and Jesus. There's no difference between us and Jesus. Because Jesus, I'm trying to make the point that Jesus was simply a man empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes, he was God, but he put his God in it. You understand, everybody understand what I'm saying, right? Okay. 
So put those scriptures up for me, please. Uh, Luke 4, 1 to 2. Then Jesus being filled. So Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're all filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he returned from the Jordan, and he was led into the, into the, into the wilderness by the Spirit of God, right? And then he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. He was tempted by the devil for 40 days, and he ate nothing. You guys reading that? Sorry. And he ate nothing. And afterwards, when, he, when, he, when they had ended, when the days had ended, he was hungry. He was hungry. So while Jesus was in the wilderness, um, the devil was tempting him, tempting him with all kinds of things, tempting him and tempting him and tempting him. And it, anybody here ever, okay, let me not ask that because that's not really important. Um, let me just say this. If you've fasted for more than three days, it's weakening of your body. It's incredibly weakening of your body. And if you're going to do this, right, and say you say you're going to go till six, like, you know, you're going to do every day till six, by four, three o'clock you'll be like, oh, because it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's hard to, like, terrify you. No, I'm just saying, and I, I'm going to speak about why in just a few minutes, but the thing is, Jesus didn't fast for three days or seven days or 20. He fasted for 40 days. I, can, I honestly, I, can, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. He fasted a really, really long time, right? And his flesh man was weak. His flesh was weak. And when we're weak and going through stuff, that's when the enemy attacks. That's when the enemy attacks. And so the enemy attacked Jesus, right, while he was fasting. And the devil can be relentless. He was just coming at him and coming at him and coming at him. And Jesus knew that what he had to do here, that he had a purpose. He knew he had a purpose. And the enemy <laughs> was coming at him and offering him alternatives. I don't want to go through those, but offering him alternatives to God's plan. Jesus knew he had a purpose, right? But the enemy was coming with opportunities for him to compromise, okay? So if you're doing something on behalf of the Lord, even in the band or preaching Bible school, whatever it is that you're doing, even not on behalf of the Lord, just whatever it is you're doing, something at school, something with your friends, whatever, the enemy is all, if he did it to Jesus, he's going to do it to us. He's always going to be coming with us and coming at us, rather, with opportunities to compromise. Opportunities so you don't really have to do all that. Do it this way. Take a shortcut, but, but, but it, it won't be integral. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it won't be, no, it won't be. All right. So anyways, Jesus showed us two things, right, by, by what he experienced in the wilderness. The first thing he did, which is really incredible, and guys, this is so important that we do. He didn't use his own strength. He was weak. If you fasted, like, for three days, okay, not three, like seven, it's brutal. Okay, I shouldn't really be saying that when I'm trying to encourage you to fast, should I? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, with no food, just water. Like, it, it, but mind you, I shouldn't say that because by a certain few days, your strength actually does come back, which is bizarre. But, um, but anyways, so Jesus was in the, in, the, in the wilderness, and he was weak. He was weak, but he fought the enemy. He fought the enemy because the enemy was coming at him and, co and offering him all of these things that would have made his, um, all that he was doing easier. He, he, he you know, uh, what was the first one? I didn't write any of that. Oh, he was hungry, right? He was hungry. So somebody throw the verse at me. That's right. Man shall not live by bread alone. So you know what? Come on, come on, right? Make, make the stone into, into bread. And Jesus, Jesus cast him down. Jesus used something on the enemy. And I'm encouraging all of you to always do that. But you cannot use this sword if we don't know it. So we got to crack it open and get in there. And this fast is an opportunity to do that, right? We have to get into the word. Jesus used the sword of the word to battle the enemy, not his own strength right? Because he didn't have any strength. And this is the second thing that Jesus showed us in his battle. Jesus showed us that one of the reasons, it's so big, why fasting is, is the secret sauce is because when our bodies is, becomes physically weak because of fasting, physically weak because, sorry, of spir spiritual fasting, then our spirit man literally rises up and becomes strong. Okay, our spirit man rises up and becomes strong. You, didn't, you don't have this verse, Matt, but in Luke 4, 14, Jesus actually came out of the wilderness, no longer with the power of God in him, but, but in the power of the spirit. You know, so he went in, what was the first one? He went in 
full of the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit in him. You don't have that scripture. Oh, I did give it to you. Okay. How good am I? All right. <laughs> All right. So Jesus went into the wilderness, Luke 4, 1, full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, which we all are, full of the Holy Spirit, if you've invited Jesus in. But then he came out of the wilderness. After battling the enemy for 40 days, he came out in the power of the Spirit. And the news about him spread all over the place. And, um, and um, the part of him that was weak, his flesh, became strong in the spirit part. Um, the, right, the spirit part of him became strong. He was fully led by the Holy Spirit, and God wants that for us. So why pray? Why is prayer and fasting the secret sauce? Let's look at the second reason. So Jesus showed us the first reason. Let's talk for a bit about humility and fasting. Humility and fasting. You know, all throughout the scriptures of the Old Testament and the New Testament, God is always asking us to humble ourselves. Always asking us to humble ourselves. Somebody want to define that for me and tell me what that means? What does it mean to humble yourself? Anybody know? It's like this piece of fuzz that's... <laughs> Anybody know what it means to humble yourself? Mm -hmm. Don't, don't big up yourself too much. Okay, okay, fair enough, good, good. I think the best definition, and that, that is a good one, the best definition of fasting for me is John 15, 5. John 15, 5, and it says, without him, without Jesus, I can do nothing. It literally says that. Without him, I can do nothing, you know? And fasting and prayer, by the way, um, is if, if, if the, the God th all throughout the scriptures is constantly telling us and asking us to humble ourselves before him. Humble yourself before me. And fasting or prayer, fasting and prayer is one of the best ways to humble ourselves before God. It's actually a biblical way to humble ourselves before God. David, in um, Psalm 69, humbled his soul. Uh, can you put that one up for me? David, awesome. Um, it says, uh, David... I don't even have the scripture. Uh, wept. When I wept and humbled my soul with fasting, it became my reproach. So David was humbling himself before the Lord, and he said that. In Psalms 35, 13, David also says, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, and I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer was turned to my own heart. In these two verses, David was humbling himself before God. It's important to ask this, you know, I just spoke about the fact that fasting is a spiritual way, sorry, spiritual fasting is a way to humble ourselves biblically before the Father. But why, why, um, you might wonder why, like why is that? Why is that? Why is that? How is fasting humbling ourselves before God? You know, I, I, it's so funny, and I'm going to say this, because the Holy Spirit, like, has kind of set up our time here. And he wanted me to talk about fasting. And I was like, okay, like, what, what, what am I supposed to say? I fast, you know, because I believe fasting is something that um, Jesus did. So I did it. I do it. But um, even just explaining some of the stuff, I was like, God, you're going to have to give me some stuff. Because for me to go in and talk about the stuff, it's like, I, I don't know. But anyway, so I'm just trying to say that the Lord is, is I believe, speaking to us here at Rain, and he wants to um, pull us in. He, he wants us to uh, draw nearer to him. He wants us, I, I don't really like that term. I do love that term, sorry, but my, my daughter has says, Mom, you can't be using terms like that. Make sure people know what you mean. Okay, so <laughs> he's always saying that. He, he wants us to take some time and make the time to come closer to him here at Rain. you know? And I believe that's why we're, he's talking about things like fasting. All right. So it's a way, one of the ways we humble ourselves before God. And how do we, how do, we do that? Because fasting is an act of self-denial. 
It literally is an act of self-denial. We deny ourselves, so we choose. And it's not something you're like, he's not like, you must. No, we choose. You choose to deny yourself. You choose to, to say no to the burger and fries, for example, right? You choose to do that. You choose to say no to food to spend time with God. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, unless your flesh is like, no! <laughs> and, I, and I totally get that. But we choose to deny ourselves. We choose to say no to food, and we choose instead to, to, um, to spend time with God. Because lives, our lives are busy. Anybody here have a busy life? Like, oh, my gosh. Like, life, life busy. School, work, church, relationships, family, right? And, and um, when we fast and when we take the time to fast, we're literally pushing away food physically, but we're drawing nearer to God spiritually. We have, we have the opportunity. You guys understand what I'm saying, right? You ha we have the opportunity to do that, right? By the way, and, and it's important to say this, God, is God going to love me more, going to love us more when we fast? <laughs> He's not. It's so important to realize that because he can't love us more. He cannot love us more, right? Not at all, not at all. But we, but we have the benefit um, as we show, as Jesus showed, that when we fast and when we, when we put away food, we're pushing down a particular part of us, which is called the flesh, and I'm going to explain what that is next, and then, um, and then our, our spirit man rises up, okay? All right. Um, sorry. Ah, so here's a question. What happens to us? What happens to us when we humble ourselves before God with prayer and fasting? What happens to us, right? What happened to Jesus? Because we saw earlier that Jesus humbled himself with fasting and prayer, right? What happened to Jesus when Jesus do that? Don't put the scriptures up yet for me. In Philippians 2, verse 6 to 11, I'm going to show verse 8 to 11 in just a minute. Um, it talks about what happened to Jesus when he fasted and when he prayed. It totally talks about it. It says that even though Jesus was God, and this is what I was speaking about before, when Jesus was here, so God, we, 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 you know we serve a three-part God, right? Where it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is Son, right? He's God. But when he was here on earth, though he was God... He took his deity part of him and put it away and came here as Jesus as man. It, it's called the incarnate, which anybody understand it clear enough to explain it to us? <laughs> I don't. But anyways, maybe when one of you Bible students um, <laughs> um, 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 do a preach, I'm going to be calling you to do one soon, um, you can maybe explain some of that to us because it's, 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 a, it's a different kind of concept. But the point is, instead of operating here on earth in his divine, godly principles, he put them all away. He, he, limited his, he limited his abilities while he was here on earth. You understand what I mean? Like, he didn't operate in his power. The Holy Spirit's power was operating. Do you guys understand why that's important to know that? Somebody, you understand why? Sorry? Amen, amen, amen. It, is an, it totally is an act of humbling himself. And also, if Jesus was here as our example, operating as God, then how could we do it? How could we operate the same way? How could we heal the sick? How, we couldn't do any of those things, but we can do it because we're, we are man, and God was here, Jesus was here as man, empowered by the same person who's empowering us, who is the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so instead, he ga Jesus gave up his divine privileges. He's limited his abilities. He limited his knowledge. Because think about it. He's omniscient. He knows all. He limited his power. He limited everything. And he humbled himself to the position of a slave, right? And he was born. Think about how amazing that is. Every time I think about that, that God l belittled himself. Not that, like, we're so horrible, but really? right? He, he, he lowered himself. He wasn't even born as a man. He was born as a baby. Like, he came here as a, as a baby. So anyways, put up eight for me, please. Eight to 11. So Jesus humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross, which is amazing. 
And therefore, okay, so this is what my question was. What happened to Jesus when he humbled himself? Verse 9 says, so therefore God elevated him, right, to a place of highest honor. Is that up there? Yay. To a place of highest honor. And God gave him, listen, the name above every name. So it doesn't matter. Like if you have a friend, like we've been talking about um, um, deliverance here. We've been talking about healing. We've been talking about all of those things because that's what the scripture says that we have the ability to do. So if you have a friend that has cancer or has whatever, and I use cancer because it's a high one, Jesus' name is above that name. Jesus' name is above that name. So God gave him a name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? So he denied himself. He totally denied himself, and he did God's will. So Jesus humbled himself, and then what did God do? God lifted him up. What happens to us, do you think, when we humble ourselves? Don't put the scripture up yet. What happens to us? Somebody throw something at me. What happens to us when we we humble ourselves? Okay, you guys are not communicating. Okay, Marley. <laughs> yeah, Marles. Sorry? I, I didn't hear you. I, I can't hear you, honey. I'm sorry. Amen, amen, amen. So God has the opportunity to use us because he knows we're not going to step in and take the glory for ourselves. Amen. So what happens when we humble ourselves? And thank you, Marles. What happens when I have to give somebody else a chance, right? Uh, What happens when we humble ourselves, right, with prayer and fasting? James 4.10 explains it really well. It says, when we humble ourselves before the Lord. And guys, this is what God, God wants us to do more than anything. He will exalt us. He will lift us up, right? It's not our job to, um, oh, my gosh, like, I want a pastor, right? And so, you, and which is fine, and you go to Bible school, and then you find a church, and then you, you, you I don't know, uh, <laughs> claw your way in. You know, God is the one that appoints you. You know what I mean? And, and anoints you to do the job, right? Or, I don't know, it doesn't even have to be pastor, but any job, right? Let, 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 humble yourselves before him, and he will exalt you. He will lift you up, right, when it's, when, it's, um, when it's your time. Here's another question. What happens to those who lift themselves up above others? That's a question. Yeah? Sorry, sorry? Yes, yes, amen. Amen. Matthew 23, 12 says, for those who exalt or honor themselves, big themselves up, right? Oh my gosh, look at me. I'm like, (laughs) first of all, it's so unattractive, isn't it? (laughs) Like, really? Calm yourself down, right? But for those who exalt themselves and honor themselves and lift themselves up above others, they will be humbled, and that, 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 is not, that is not funny. And for those who humble themselves, they will be exalted. They'll be lifted up, right? Okay. So we're going to look at the third, um, the third reason why prayer and fasting uh, is the secret sauce to kingdom living. We've looked at two so far because Jesus did it, and he's our example, right? Because fast, the second one is because fasting humbles us before God. And, um, and um, yeah, fat, uh, humbled us before God. So let's look at the last one. And this one is, uh, I hope this connects to you. I think it will. Um, the last one is because fasting kills the flesh. Anybody know what I mean by that? Anybody want to define what's the flesh? Hands going up. Yeah, go ahead. Look at you. Look at you. Awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Um, The Apostle Paul speaks a lot about the flesh in the book of Romans and the book of Galatians. I'm just going to define the flesh a little bit. Um, The flesh essentially is our sinful nature, you know. Um, The part of us, as Liliana just said, that is alienated from God. 
it is separated from God. It's the part of us that's rebellious, right? It's a rebellious part of us. It's a part of us that does not want to do what God wants us to do. <laughs> it, 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 it's a part of us that, that will do things that we know God doesn't want us to do, but we're still doing it, right? It's a part of us that wants to have our own way. As I was writing these down, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Right? Right? It's the part of us that wants to have our own way. It's the part, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh part of us, it's the part of us that God battles with. You guys connecting with what I'm saying, right? It's, it's our sinful nature. The flesh part of us is the part of us that, that, that keeps us from reading the scriptures. It's a part of us that, um, that, that when, we, when we go to pray and, and, and something dings on the phone and we're like, oh, God, we can do that later. And then we're doing this, right? It's, it's a part, that's a part of us. It's a part of us that would rather spend hours on Netflix and read the word, right? Uh, it's a part of us that doesn't want to be told what to do. Like, what? What? Right? It's that, it's that part of us. It's the part of us. You ever experienced this? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that I experienced this this week. <laughs> it's the part of us when someone is telling us something and we don't want to hear it, that part of us in our back rises up and we're like, oh. right? You know that part? Right? Yeah, that part. I experienced that this week. Um, it's a part of us that is stubborn. Stubborn. It's a scripture, actually, in the Bible where it says stubbornness is as bad as witchcraft. That's in 1 Samuel. That's what the Bible says. But God is not a fan of stubbornness. The flesh part of us is the part of us that refuses correction. Anybody? <laughs> we refuse when your parents say something. By the way, as a pastor standing up here and a mom, this is so nice. <laughs> Until I look and I go, oh, my gosh, me, 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 right? It's a part of us that refuses correction and pushes limits, pushes limits, right? Our flesh does not want us to have anything to do with God. Isn't that, that's our flesh. It doesn't want us to have anything to do with God. Our flesh hates, hates to be under authority, any kind of authority. Doesn't, not the authority of God or anything like that. And this is a big one. Our flesh wants us to be our own God, our own God. We call the shots. We say how it is. And here's one. Our flesh knows God's plan for us, but it wants to do things its own way. It wants to do things its own way. Our flesh fights us from fully submitting to God. <laughs> It's, this is huge. I, I'm, is this what, I, what I'm saying, blessing you guys? Is it, is it connecting? Yeah. It, 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 I was writing this, and I'm like, oh, dear Lord. It, it fights us from fully. And, and listen, don't ever think that submitting to God is an easy thing that you can just do on, oh, my gosh, last Tuesday, I totally submitted to God. Like, not that you can't do it last Tuesday, but it's not an easy thing. It's not like, you know, it's no. Because there's something there that is fighting you and fighting you and fighting you, totally fighting you. By the way, where did this flesh come from? Anybody? Where did, where did our flesh, where did it come from? Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was birthed with Adam when Adam originally sinned. And he chose to do things his own way. He disobeyed God. He's like, no, it's okay. And he went and took the fruit and the whole, you know. So we're actually born of Adam. We're all born of Adam in Adam's bloodline. And, and so we're born sinners, literally, right? We know that, right? And that is why Jesus says we must be born again. We must be born again, right, of the Spirit. And then we're going to be, and he wants us to be Spirit-led not flesh-led, right? Spirit-led, not flesh-led. Flesh. Say it with me. <laughs> he wants us to be spirit-led, not flesh-led. Where am I going to do that? Hold on one sec. All right, so I'm going to do that in just a sec. I just want to share a scripture before I do that. Notice I have a rope here, big old rope. I'm going to have four people come up in just a second, and we're going to just demonstrate something. Um, 
So fasting is all about killing that flesh. Fasting is all about killing that part of us that wants nothing to do with God. It's about killing and crushing that, that sinful nature part of us. And that's why God likes, that, likes fasting, right? Because that, 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 that part of us is constantly fighting, constantly fighting anything to do with God. You think, oh, today I'm going to just read the scriptures, and all of a sudden somebody comes over or something or something comes up, Netflix. It, it's constantly fighting that. A couple of scriptures, Galatians 5, uh, 16 and 17. Can you just pop those up for me? I was trying to figure out which is the best version of putting this up, but I wanted one that said the flesh, so you didn't think I was creating a word. <laughs> um, but I say to you, right, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He's like, walk by the Spirit. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to walk arm in arm with the Holy Spirit so we will not carry out the desires of the flesh, Right? We won't want to do all the sinful things that the flesh wants us to do. There's all kinds of things. Go down in the scriptures, I think it's verse 19, and it talks about all kinds of sinful things. Lust, um, idolatry, uh, jealousy, like all of those types of things. Right? Verse 17 says, for the desire of the flesh is against the desire of the spirit. Right? And these two things, the flesh and the spirit are always fighting each other. They're always in opposition to each other. I want to have four people come up. Jonathan, come on up. One, two, yes. You're going to just pull a rope. Come on. Look at me. <laughs> yes, and, 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 um, and Olivia beside you. We're warming Olivia up. Don't worry, Olivia. You'll be up here soon. And then, uh, and then Ruby. Yes, why not? You join Jonathan and then um, Olivia and, uh, and Juliana. So it's a rope, right? So grab an end. Olivia and Jonathan. So you guys come over here. Jonathan and we're going to do a little tug of war. Have you guys figured it out? Tug of war. <laughs> so so do I have to come down and demonstrate? Yeah, and then go like over there and you're going to pull. So, yeah, pull, 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 people, pull. There we go, pull. Olivia! Olivia. <laughs> okay, we're going <laughs> to... Olivia, you have to help her. <laughs> but actually, that's what happens when we fast, because the flesh man gets weak. And the spirit man gets strong. And then the spirit man overtakes the flesh. And that's what Jesus demonstrated, right? That's what Jesus... All right, so come on. Pull. 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 Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about... You okay? <laughs> that's okay. Okay, you can drop it now. You can drop it now. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, so, guys... That, <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> no, but what you did actually demonstrated my point because what happens is the flesh gets weak and the spirit takes over, right, which is what happened with Jesus. That, what we just saw, is constantly happening within us, constantly. There's a constant battle all the time within us, right? Um, by the way, if, if you don't think that the flesh is operating strong in you, you know, and you don't have a sinful nature inside of you, try two things. Try just getting to a quiet place and just pray, praying for three, three, four minutes and just see how quickly you get distracted, how quickly you get distracted. And here's the second thing. Try a fast. Try a fast, however long you fast, right, and see how quickly the flesh before you even start, the thought of it, the flesh is like, no. The flesh is like, no. Romans, 5, Romans 8, 5 says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the, desire, what the flesh desires. And those are not good things, right? But those who live, according, live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. Romans 8, 8 says, those who are in the flesh, those who are in the rebellious neighbor, neighbor nature <laughs> cannot please God 
we cannot please God because there's one over here that's the flesh that's pulling in one direction and one over here that's the spirit, right? And whoever wins this battle, it's up to us. It's totally up to us. It's totally up to us who, um, who, uh, who, who wins. So prayer and fasting is the secret sauce to kingdom living for three re- There's so, guys, there's so much to talk about with this fasting stuff, and I just picked these three things um, because it allows us to imitate Jesus and do it because Jesus did. Because fasting is a biblical way for us to humble ourselves before the Lord. And because fast is ha- fasting helps us to kill the flesh, right? Which is the enemy of the spirit man within us. All right, I'm almost done. Let's just look at um, five, not five, actually, it's a little more than five. Let's look at a few quick tips, right, of how, um, of just, you know, just to help us with, with fasting. Anyone here going to uh, join us with the fast? Yay, yay, yay. And I hope some people online and online, and even if you don't get a chance to join us today, um, just pick some time, you know, and, um, and fast, because it's an awesome way to just kind of draw nearer to God. So let's look at some ways. Uh, how many of them do I have? I think I have eight or nine ways, nine ways, and I'm going to be super quick. The first one's a little longer. Um, when you fast, when we choose to fast, right, don't just be like, well, I'm just going to try this thing and just see how long I go. No. No, have a reason, like have a reason that you want to fast, like a spiritual reason that you want to fast. Um, maybe you just, you just want to hear God more. Maybe, you know, you've been praying to him about something and you're just wondering and you're like, I just, I just Lord, I, I want direction from you for whatever, for whatever, you know, and, and you want to um, just get closer to him. It's, it's an awesome way to do that. Maybe you're starting a ministry. Maybe you're starting a new job and you just want to invite him in. Um, maybe you're looking for direction. You know, what school do I go to? Who do I date? Should I date that guy? Should I date that girl? Should I? Seriously, guys, ask. Because Holy Spirit will tell you, run. He'll tell you. <laughs> he might tell you, oh, go the other way. Not because he doesn't love that person, but maybe because he thinks that person is not for you. Right? You understand? Right? Um, uh, and here's a thought. When we're fasting, right, and... Uh, and, um, and, and you're feeling hungry, right? Or maybe you're just like, oh, my gosh, I'm used to eating my burger or whatever by now. And maybe your head starts to hurt a little bit. You don't go, oh, when is this going to be over? This is so awful. That, that's not the response that you want, right? Maybe you say instead, you know what? I'm experiencing this because I'm fasting, I'm experiencing this. And then you think of whatever it is that you're fasting about. That's what I said. It's important to fast with a purpose. You know, you know what? I'm fasting because I'm waiting to hear, on, I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Don't just like, oh, I'm going to just try this. Because if you just go, I'm just going to try this and see how long I last, you won't last long. <laughs> You just won't because the the flesh is going to be yanking you right over and saying, no, that's not going to happen, right? So determine how long you will fast. We're planned, like I said, a two-week fast starting tomorrow. And, um, And, you know, you can do a fast however you like. Like, you don't have to, like, totally cut out food. And another suggestion I I was going to have is start small. Don't be like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do two weeks with just water. You know what? If you do and you're able to do that, great. But I, I, just from experience, it's better to just start small and kind of step into it a little bit and, and, and start small. Maybe do breakfast for four days. You know, like start by breakfast, I mean from when you get up, like 7 or something like that, till, till noon. Like that, that's, that's, that's a lot for some people. But if you don't eat till noon every day, then don't choose that one. <laughs> right? Then don't choose, I want to fast till noon. If every day you don't eat till noon, right? So if you don't, if you eat at noon, then, for example, then maybe go till three. But it should cost you something, right? It should, it should come against your flesh. It, your body should be saying, oh, man, I'm hungry. You know what I mean? Do you guys know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so start small. Um, oh, so yeah, so however you want to do tomorrow, if you want to, um, for the two-week period, if you want to do something maybe for the first three days, go till 6 o'clock, you know. But listen, if, you, if it's your birthday on Wednesday or something, don't fast on that day. Like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just do, 
do it in a way that it's going to work, right? Like, yeah. Um, determine the type of fast you want to have. So there's a Daniel fast. Anybody know what a Daniel fast is? Yeah, like a Daniel fast where you eat a little bit, but you, uh, you, you just kind of limit it. Like you, you'd have oatmeal, but without the sugar. I, I, don't, I don't understand that, to be honest. <laughs> Daniel fast don't work for me because, oh yeah, food's just got to taste good. Um, <laughs> and if I'm going to eat oatmeal without maple syrup, no, I'm just going to not eat the oatmeal. But um, anyway, determine what kind of fast you want to do. Do you want to do a full fast with just water? Do you want to do a fast? One of the fasts, one of the drinks I like to use um, during a fast is, uh, is organic chicken stock. You know, like chicken stock? Just add a little salt, heat that up, right? And just, it's, it's not going to fill you, but, it, right? Or just water. Or, um, or if you want to just go three hours, or if you want to just maybe go three days, whatever it is, you determine it, right? And then you say it, maybe write it down, get a little journal, um, and then honor God by doing it. Honor him. Honor him. And when you're fasting, though, it's not like we're not intermittent fasting here. We're not fasting just to lose 20 pounds or 10 or whatever. The, the purpose of the fast, the biblical fast, is to pray and, and, just, and just do some of those biblical pimp principles that we spoke about, right? Get into the word, read it more, all of those things, right? Um, if you're offered food on the fast, right? So you're at church, you're out with some friends, whatever, and somebody offered food, just say, you know what? No, thanks, I'm not hungry. Don't be like, well, you know, I'm doing this fast, and don't do that. <laughs> because what's going to happen? That will, they'll be like, oh, really? That will be your reward right? So don't, don't do that. Again, we're doing a corporate fast right now. So, and it's a large group, so it's a little bit different because everybody knows um, it's not individual. Um, here's the thing. Fasting doesn't rush God. Don't be like, well, I've been praying to God about this thing and he hasn't answered, so I'm going to fast for three days and that will, it doesn't rush God. It, it, no. And the fact that we even want to rush God is self-righteous to us because Anyways, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to start. Like, you know, it's important to say. God knows all, and it sucks waiting on him. Anybody agree with me? Sometimes, like, it's, it sucks. It totally sucks. But we have to wait on him because he knows, right? And everybody that God used in the kingdom had to wait, right? Had to wait. So that, don't be like, I'm going to fast because that's going to rush God. No, it's not. Fasting is to affect us, not God. It, it, it is to have effect on us and our relationship with him, not, not him. Um, I said this before, but it's, it's not for us to lose 12 pounds, right? And the thing is, that's a, uh, what do you call that? that? That can probably happen, but that should not be the goal, like, you know, with the fast. And the thing is, the only prayer, I say this to the Holy Spirit all the time. You know what the coolest thing about it was? Sometimes it's cool, but sometimes it's kind of not. Because he's the only person that knows exactly what's in our heart. So where everybody else would be like, oh, my gosh, yeah. Like in the corporate, everyone's like, so-and-so is fasting. The Holy Spirit might know. You're not really fasting to seek his face. You're just fasting because you want to fit into those genes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just saying, like, it's important to fast for the purpose of God, to draw near to him and, um, and to seek him. And here's the last one. It's not a competition, right? We're doing it corporately so everybody knows um, that we're doing it. But don't be like, um, and I'm saying this because, you know, it's important. Don't be like, oh, my gosh, what? You're doing, you're fasting this way or that way? And then, um, oh, uh, I'm only doing this. It's, it's not a competition. However, however, and this is important. If you see somebody, and we were talking about that last week, if you see or hear that someone is fasting in a particular way that you've never tried, let that encourage you to try. Let that encourage you to go a little deeper. Let that, if, you, if you've only ever fasted maybe for two days or maybe one, and you hear somebody that's fasted for four you know, or fasted and, and without food or something like that, right? Um, let that encourage you. You know what I'm saying? Let that encourage you to go a little deeper. Let that encourage you to go a little deeper. All right, so I'm going to conclude with this, um, and I'm going to read it. Fasting is the act. It's an act. It is something that we choose to do of denying our flesh, 
right? Denying our flesh. It's imitating Jesus, as I spoke about at the very beginning. It's humbling ourselves before God, which is something that he desires more than anything. It's, it's what he desires, and it's killing our flesh. It's killing the part of us that is drawing us away from him. And more than anything, he, he wants us to do that. More than anything, he wants us to do that. So let's fast. Join us for the fast and come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Because while we're fasting, we're not starving. We're, st we're, we're, we're not eating physically, but we're eating spiritually, right? We're eating, we're, 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 we're worshiping him and being in his presence. And literally, I've fasted and thought, oh, man, I'm hungry. And then read the word and felt better, like for real, <laughs> for real, right? Anybody experience that? Yeah, yeah, it's true, right? You feel like you eat, you, you might eat the word. Okay, that sounds a little weird. Um, you, 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 you take a scripture or just take a part of, just determine maybe where you're going to read or maybe not, just, you know, and like a book of Luke or something or a couple chapters in Luke and then go in there and take, and if you're at work or at school, just take a, take a scripture, have it on your phone and then just, just, just meditate on it. Just take it in and, oh Lord, I'm so grateful that, you know, I'm not alone or whatever, you know, just take it in like that. All right, I think I'm done. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. God is good. Woo! Oh, I'm not done. I almost forgot this. Um, do you guys remember our 10 most wanted list? So we did this uh, last June for a month. We have copies of the 10 most wanted. Um, if you're praying in the spirit, and this is, guys, this is, again, not just uh, fasting, but fasting and prayer. And so if you pray in the spirit, I encourage you to pray in the spirit, you know, for a time while you're fasting. Um, but if you don't pray in the spirit and you're looking for something to pray, or you're looking for someone to pray for, right? Put an enemy's name on here, by the way. Here's a good idea. Here's a good way to crush the enemy, <laughs> right? The actual enemy. Put someone on here that is coming against you. You know what I mean? Do that. Do that. Um, okay. So that's it. So you can get copies of this at the back. I think that's it. Um, we're going to pray. I'm going to pray and close off. I didn't prepare anything at the very end. Um, let's just pray and close off. What time is it? Oh, gosh, it's late. All right. Um, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you so much, Lord. And we're so grateful that we have the opportunity, Father. We have the opportunity, Lord, to do this thing, to choose to choose to do this thing called fasting, Lord, so we can actually um, come deeper into your presence, Lord. We know that you're in us fully, so we can't really get more of you, Lord, but we can get a deeper revelation, a deeper understanding, and a deeper connection with you, Lord. And fasting will certainly help us to do that because it seems like it will kill the parts of, of us, Lord, that are in us naturally that is pulling us away from you, Holy Spirit. And so we thank you. We thank you. And Lord, we pray that those online will join us. We pray that those on Instagram, Lord, will join us, Lord. And, um, and that this will uh, be a part of what we do here at Rain, Lord. And that our, our desire here at Rain, Jesus, won't just be to, um, to, to get from you, Lord, but to get to know you, Jesus. Not just to get things from you, and, and we know you, you don't mind that, but to also get to know you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we have the honor of your presence here. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to make your presence known in this place. And we lift you right now and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord.